Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Don, we back in the building, baby. The Coach Me Coach podcast number 38. You on mute right now. But before I go ahead and get this thing and get it rocking and rolling, we're here to talk about the Georgia Bulldogs demolished the tennis, I mean the Tennessee, the Texas Christian University horned frogs. My goodness, you talk about and Dom, you more of an expert probably when it comes to all of these statistics and who did what, when, and where. But I know that there had to be another game kind of like this. May not be often, but I know there was one out there. I think I heard some about Notre Dame. But real quick before I do that, big shout out to Ellen in the building with a thumbs up. So therefore, the producers let me know everything looks good and sounds good. I must be remiss if I don't do this. Pilo. Big shout out to you. You gave the cash app. I missed it on the last show. So thank you to P Low Man for the five dollars uh so much. And he also said, shout out to the best channel on YouTube, Coach Hayes Football. I really appreciate that. It means a lot, man. We got a lot of things coming up here in the new year. We're gonna make it grow and everything else. And five dollars from Reggie. Coach, we have to start with the YouTube meltdown video. A message for the college football playoff committee. <laughs> man, I, I would love to play it. You talking? I, I guess you're talking about the Kirby Smart. Is that what he's talking about? The I don't, I don't, what you talking about, Reggie? What did he say in the pregame speech? Outside of, I, I got a, it. I, a, I got bunch it. Of, a bunch of four letters. <laughs> hey, but you know what I love about pregame speeches now? They have to put a disclaimer when you talk about kicking somebody behind. I'm not talking about playing dirty, but we got to kick their behind, like. You don't want to be caught up in the old, you know what I mean? The the the, the uh, what they call Greg thing was it G- Greg Roman Bounty Gate? We got to put some on yeah, the Bounty Gate. So you have to go ahead and put out this this disclaimer before you tell your team to go kill somebody. I don't really mean kill them, but I want yeah, them I, dead. <laughs> dog, did you ever dead. see the video oh, of the I Oregon State? Them, yeah. Let me say the Oregon State um, interim coach. He was describing how he wanted. He said, listen, we're going to stab him in the heart. Then we're going to bury the bodies. And then we're going to go about our way. I was like, man, they, they, I know ESPN are kicking themselves, man. <laughs> I'm yeah, putting I'm that. Hey, I'm pissed off, dog. I'm mad. I'm I see. Off. There's a lot of comments in here. I know you got a lot to say, a lot to talk about. So, like I said, go ahead. We literally just. A hundred and a couple of people short of 29,000 subscribers. So if you are new to this channel, I had to put the subscribers on. We want to keep those robots out and all of them, the wacky stuff that goes on when it comes to that. But guys, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe button if you care too. We would appreciate it. Also, if you want to leave a comment, go ahead and do it. Coach Hayes and Dom. Dom actually uh, twisted my arm to make the uh, people who watch the show get free subscribe buttons this year. I was fighting it as hard as I could. And he's like, Coach, you're being selfish. Yeah. You're being selfish, Coach. Give the subscribe button out for free. So guess what? I'm giving out total F-R-E-E, if you understand. So go ahead and hit that thing. Let's jump straight into this deal. Um, I'm just going to read off a little bit of the box score, some of the things that just stood out. For example, total plays, Georgia – Beat them pretty much by 21 total plays, 72 to 51. But here's the biggest one. Total yards, 589 total yards to 188 total yards. Uh, You know, TCU was just overmatched. I'm sorry. That was, yeah. No, that was total yards. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to let you go ahead and get your, your ran off. You can go ahead and kick this deal off. 80, how a- many yards came on one drive? I don't know, 80-something yards? I don't know. So we got 60 out of 188 came on the busted play by Keely Ringo. And then, wow. So here's what I have to say, man. 
I know I'm sure you're familiar with Otis Redding. Of course. Sitting on the dock of the bay from Dawson, Georgia, baby. No, that, time. no, that's that's when he was when he made all his money and he just wanted to try country music. I'm talking about Prime Otis Redding. Prime okay. Otis Redding had a song that I listen to when I'm down. And it simply says, Pain in my heart just won't let me be. Wake up restless nights, Lord, I can't even sleep. That was me after watching that game because it kills me that Ohio <laughs> State was one point. That was we one point away. That's the and here's the thing. We were that's what kills me. First and foremost, congratulations to Georgia. But my heart is aching. We one point away. If that doggone goal post was 20 yards to the left where Noah kicked it, we would have been in the national championship. <laughs> to the left. <laughs> to the left. We and it's like that Shaq the- reel. Remember that Shaq yeah. that be moving around? All oh, around. Yeah. You, you got to try to – that would, listen, if we was playing that, guarantee we'd been in the national championship. Somebody said this to me, and most I have a, a good, really close friend of mine is a Georgia fan. Um, and then I kept seeing it from Georgia fans last night. They said, dog, why do you think that the Georgia players, that the Georgia fans, who I have to say, they were really cool after the Ohio State game. They gave Ohio State their props um, because it was a great game. It was arguably the best game of the season. Um, But they said, why do you think they did that? Why do you think they were crying, the players were crying, and people were crying after the game? And I was like, what they said because they knew that, that was the national championship game. <laughs> it's like Georgia had dudes that weren't even on a scholarship yet, and they're making plays last night. Like, dude, like, and you know the crazy thing about it, and this is part of the rant. TCU had a phenomenal season. TCU had a phenomenal season. I don't want to hear none from Alabama fans because Alabama fans have been making their voices known. That shouldn't have been nuts. That should have been nuts. That's why you have to put the, the the top four teams in the playoffs. Let me tell you something. I ain't nobody trying to hear that. <laughs> Nobody's trying to hear that. Because y'all should first of all, I think we can Alabama should have lost three games this year. They should have lost to Texas. But you know, Texas got issues. Um, but if y'all listen. If you take care of business in the regular season and you win the games you're supposed to, then you, let me tell you something, because a one-loss Alabama team and a one-loss TCU team, who you think going in? Guarantee they would have found a way to put Alabama in. And you would have seen Ohio State versus Michigan, Alabama versus Georgia. But, so Alabama fans, I'm not trying to hear that. You lost two games. The way you're structured. Now, listen, in a, in a year, you ain't have to worry about that because it's going to be a 12-team playoffs. You're going to see all sorts of teams there. But TCU, man, you talk about – and I have to give credit to Kirby Smart because this is something that pissed me off about him. Hayes, what do you think they were saying after the game? Did you hear the quotes? For who? Quotes for, for for Georgia, the players. Did you hear what they were saying? No, go for it. Sorry. Y'all picked us to go five and y'all picked us to go five and seven, seven and six. Y'all picked us to not have. I'm trying to say who did this. So credit to Kirby Smart for finding a lie and getting these kids to believe this lie, and that's what they carry. And look, I I I expected Georgia to win. I did not expect that. I did not expect. I mean, it's hard for me to find the words to say. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Part part of me didn't want to do this show because I didn't know what to say. I'm not even going to lie to you. (laughs) Outside of my little rant about how hurt I was that that should have been all. I feel like if a house, if we... If all we had to do, one stop. Defense made a stop. See, I'm not into the ref game saying the refs did it. We just needed one stop. One stop. So, so that, that's just my Here's what I am. Be quiet. I let, I let you have your two cents and gave you another three cents so you have a full nickel on this. Please. You gave me a dollar. My, I appreciate my it. Name, 
Yeah, my name tonight is called Rebut. I'm going to rebut everything people are talking about. That's my name tonight, Rebut. But before I get into that rebuttal, I like to give Lakers all day, uh, Lakers all day dope, four ninety nine. Appreciate it. Says Coach Hayes, I tagged you on IG because I told Jacari Brown he should go deer hunting with you. Uh, he liked my comment on IG. Listen, I passed right by. I could go pick him up on the way right there through Lowndes County off of I-75. I did see that Lakers all day. I appreciate it. Let him know whenever he's ready. He might be throwing, hey, he might be throwing bullets on the field, but I throw them down range because when coach close one eye, they close two. Y'all just better know that. You understand? I don't play with them. All right. And Shad 14, uh, Shad 1419 for the 499. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, and I already saw Ellen has put it in there. So go support his channel as well. Got some great uh Miami Hurricane content. Coach, people say they want parody when they really want Bama versus UGA three. Okay. You're right. So here's what I want to say about that. I'm going to rebut everything that people say I'm about curious. this game. And I'm going to tell you okay. what. Let me okay. get Reggie five dollars. David Pollock told Nick Saban to his face, yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. That's what he told him, Reggie. Appreciate the $5. So here's what I want to say. People want to say should have been Michigan. Well, guess what? Michigan should have done their job. Who said that? Who's who said that? Everybody said Michigan is a better game if Michigan was in it. Michigan should have done their job because, in my eyes, that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted Michigan to be in it, but Michigan yeah. didn't do their job. Michigan didn't do their job. Now to Ohio State, you my man, but Ohio State didn't do their job, like you said. This dude. With the kick so stink, yeah, it could have been. It wasn't a controversial call. I mean, that happens in game, but the game could have been won. Yeah, can't complain. And he yeah, blew we, it. It's true. Yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. So I'm rebutting everything. At any any point that people bring up, regardless of why TCU should not have been in it, I have a rebuttal. Even if I don't believe it, I'm going to rebut it because I believe TCU did exactly what it was supposed to do. They got there. Now, my man Holson will hit me up early this morning. He said, Coach, would you rather have – let me make sure I read the, the, the text correctly because I don't want to misquote this. And I said, yep, hashtag Horn Hawks. He says, are you telling me you would rather be TCU than Tennessee? Come on, Coach. I guess he was trying to say, would you rather be TCU and go to the Natty and get your doors blown off, or would you rather be Tennessee? I, I said, yep, hashtag Horn frogs. And I'm going to tell Tennessee. you why. Oh, Tennessee got their doors blown off too. I just had to sneak that in there. But yeah. Not 7 to 65, but still. But the reason I would rather be uh, Texas uh, uh, Texas Christian, excuse me, is because I'm there. Texas Christian beat all the odds. This is a a, a building block. If, if Sonny Dykes can build off of this, this could be a great building block to this. Now, I'm going to go back and say this about this game. And here's where a lot of people don't look at football, maybe kind of in the eyes I do or coaches or, or people in particular. We're looking at the surface, and yes, they got their doors blown off. This is no excuses. But here's what I will say about this, and this is where I give credit. People, Oh, first of all, let's go back to the strength of schedule. Oh, my God, look at TCU schedule. We can say that about Georgia. Not taking anything away from Georgia by no means. But I'm just saying, it's not like they had a, a super hard road in down this deal. Let's be honest. If we had to look at schedule for schedule, would you agree or disagree? I agree. Okay. When I look at TCU, they play some close battles. True enough. Yes, indeed. Here's where TCU's biggest problem was, and I knew this. People say they didn't know it. Again, I did not predict 65 to 7. But I knew it was going to be a blowout. And I tell you, this is why I tell you this. When you see brand new teams, I think we talked about this, Dom. When you see brand new teams like this who have not established a, a depth within on the depth chart, mm -hmm. this happens. And this is why this happens. This type of stuff happens because every week is a new battle to try to win the war. When you go to every battle, you lose soldiers. 
And as you continue to climb the rungs of this ladder, you're losing more soldiers, more soldiers. Michigan, was a, they played them tough, but they lost soldiers in that game. Like everywhere they went, you have to remember, not because they lost them in the sense they're not playing. We're talking about exerting everything you have. Like that's a part of it, believe it or not. You don't just yeah. recover. These guys are not avatars. But I'm just saying a lot of people don't realize as you exert all of that energy, all of that energy, there is no backup. I, I am the starter and the backup. I am the man. And, and you're playing Russian roulette. I said that about Max Dugan and the rest of this team. I think they shot their wallet through the rest of these teams. And they got to Georgia, who is a juggernaut when it comes to this. And like you said, the walk-ons. Well, yeah, the walk-ons look that good because they are depleted. I guarantee if you put them walk-ons out there first, it wouldn't look like that. <laughs> I guarantee that. You're right. You're right. So, so I say all that to say, Yes, would I rather be ten uh, uh, dog on TCU? Oh, yes, I would. I would love to be in the natty because now I definitely can try and work and build on to that. And it shows that look now when you still simply talking about depth, we ain't talking about I need depth to win games. I need depth to win the natty. And you know, you bring up an interesting point, and it, it I'm thinking thinking the two things. The comment I made about the Georgia fans, um, you know being so excited that they beat Ohio State because Ohio State and Georgia, they have the depth. Ohio mm -hmm. State had to prove that against Georgia because, you know, Mayan Williams, okay, he scores the touchdown, but he got hurt again. Cade Stover he had to go to the hospital. So, you know, you have to rely on that depth. And, you know, those top-tier teams, they have depth. They have guys that can come off, obviously, um, another thing you talk about is the difference makers. You know, Ohio State, we have playmakers and difference makers. Now, when one of the difference, when you have depth, you start losing difference makers. Obviously, when it, Marvin Harrison went out, you lost a difference maker. Um, That's right. And that, that changed. I understand everybody. Listen, that changed the game because it, it changed the game when you're a difference maker because the it, at least he could draw attention to people. Um, I'm reminded of when LSU a couple years ago with Joe Burrow, everybody, Ohio State had to play Clemson. That was in 2019. But the argument was, should it be Ohio State or should it be Clemson? Should it be Ohio State or Clemson? I'm sorry, Ohio State or LSU, Ohio State or LSU, Ohio State. And eventually LSU handled business, had a great SEC championship game against Georgia, and they played Oklahoma. And there was a reason why they wanted to play Oklahoma. Because what was it, 66 to 22? Mm -hmm. um, oh, did I say something? Or are we, we, we. Oh, she's talking about the chat because a lot of okay. stuff, comments, you know, people don't okay. realize I just said this comments get hit off because they use certain words that the YouTube blocks them out. But go ahead. So, but to that point, you know, Clemson, when they played LSU, LSU was a little fresher. And so the thing with Georgia, while Georgia, Listen, it was a battle with Ohio State. Remember, Darnell Washington, they lost him. They were losing pieces. But Georgia has depth. TCU, to, to your point, they don't have that depth. They, they don't have, you know, those extra horses. The same thing, you know, when Clemson got in there. Clemson didn't have as many horses as LSU because it was a tougher game, you know, prior to. So, yeah, I listen, I agree wholeheartedly. And if you look at the transfer portal – and what TCU has coming in, you build that depth. You're building guys. The the second point, quickly, I want to say, you, you talk about the coaches and the coaching. Something that I found interesting, I thought Georgia's offensive coordinator called a – Todd Malkin, um, I, if I got – yeah, I thought he called a remarkable game. I thought Will Muschamp called a remarkable game. Because what Georgia did that TCU did not do is they learned from their mistakes. Georgia, Ohio State did a great job against Georgia's tight ends. Brock Bowers, he didn't get going until the fourth quarter. He only had four catches for 64 yards. He always had the big play, you know, on third down in the fourth quarter. On fourth down, excuse me. Um, but they held him. Brock Bowers had 100 yards in the first quarter, some crap like that, or in the first or second quarter. 
He had 100 and I thought he finished with like 150, 60, 70 yards, eight catches for some reason. They, they schemed him open and they was like, okay, fine. The tight ends, that's who we're going to attack. That opened up the run game. That opened up everything else. Stetson Bennett, let him use his legs. Okay, cool. Let him use his legs. He used his legs. Oh, God, we ain't going to get into that. He used his legs. He hurt them. But, man, TCU, I don't get this. You're a defensive coach. You understand it. I understand, you know, TCU had to be feeling themselves. You know, our three-man front, our three-three-five defense got the job done against Michigan, right? But you talk about it. Def, Georgia, they got some big old dudes on that offensive line, too, and they move you. And there are so many moving pieces. And so now you actually have a more accurate – would you agree with this? At this stage, Stetson Bennett is better than J.J. McCartney. I'm not talking about stars, but I'm saying sure, – sure, sure. Yeah. I can agree with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you got a quarterback who can, who, who can move a defense with his eyes. He's more accurate. He's just as good of a runner. And, dog, they were just doing play action the entire time. First and goal at the one. TCU comes out in a three-man front. Kenny McIntosh just walks in. Like, what, what adjustments? What, you know, what are you doing? Nick Saban, I don't know if you remember, Nick Saban told the story when he was coaching in the NFL that they were running a 3-3-5, and he told a corner he had to come into the box, and the corner told him, you don't pay me enough to do that. <laughs> He's like, you got to give me more money if I'm coming into the box against these offensive linemen. I thought, man, it, it is That's why I like college football. That right there is why I mess with college football, bro, because they make making decisions, and I totally understand. Let me ask you this, Dom. Real quick, uh, insane man. I appreciate you for the ten dollars. Says Georgia shows that's what stockpiling and developing elite talent looks like when everything gels. You're 100 percent right, bro. Uh, you're 100 percent right with me. Insane. I'm telling you, it, it it looks totally different. Um, I, let's talk about the game for a minute. They asked a question to one of the commentators. I forgot who said what to who. But he asked a question. I thought it was pretty good. He said, when did you realize this game was out of control? Oh, man. Oh, dog. Like, where in the game did you say, yeah, they finna, well, as the, you know, the new tournament, they finna boat race these cats down this field, man. When they scored the touchdown after TCU went down and scored. You said it was over? Yeah, because here's the thing, because TCU is, you know, when you're streaky, it it just take one. And Georgia went down and scored with ease. And I was like, okay, you know, both teams, remember, both teams started out the game with penalties, false start (laughs) penalties. I'm sorry. Hold up. Dog, y'all so fast. Y'all killing me. Hold up. Oh, here you go. (laughs) <laughs> say, so the TCU beat Michigan. I knew it was out of Man, hand. <laughs> that's cold. <laughs> yes, sir. I like well, that. Too. That's that's because here's the thing. I think Georgia would have done the same thing to Michigan. Uh, I'm, I'm just being honest with you because <laughs> here's the thing. I knew it. There were two moments that I, I knew it, to be honest with you. The one, like I said, they both started the game with penalties, but Georgia found their rhythm faster. Max D- Duggins, he he looked shook the entire game. He he he, he was getting hit. <laughs> he had never seen any kids this big before, <laughs> you know. So it, it was. But when TCU scored, I was like, okay, maybe they can do something. But I was like, they have to get a stop. If they don't get a stop. It's over. I don't care that they held him to a field goal. It's over. So that was one. Two, I realized halfway through the first quarter, Jalen Carter was wrecking havoc, but he was staying on the field. Remember, Ohio State, our guys, Luke Whipler and Matt Jones, did a great job against Jalen Carter, and Ryan Day did a great job of scheming up a game plan that kept him on the field. And he was tired. But Jalen Carter, he said, listen, I went, he had to try to fix that. And he stayed on the field, man. He he was splitting double. He was hitting Dugan. 
and Dugan was just throwing some of the stupidest passes ever. Stupid passes, stupidest passes ever. So yeah, midway through the first, that's when I was like, okay, you know. Honestly, I went and started doing something else, and I actually missed a touchdown. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. So I missed y'all one tough. of the touchdowns. Listen, y'all tough. I'm going to say this, okay, I'm because I want to go to kind of some players – but, matter of fact, let's do this. I'm going to take my hat off right now to Stetson Bennett. I take my hat off to Stetson Bennett for having dog in him, for having belief in himself, or not giving up. It is yeah. always a 50-50 shot, bro, because your, your future really is in the hands of another man when they're telling you you're not it. Right. You know, let, let's call a spade a spade. I know what you mean, nonstop canes. I get it. That's the fan, and I understand. Yeah, he's a bum, too. But he's a two-time national championship winning bum. So I only say that to say. I say that bum being f- funny, but for him to come out, play the way he did, and nobody wanted him. They were talking. I forgot the tight end. The tight end was like, Coach, you you finna make him? Our starter, like, I mean, I'm just saying, and a shout out to the coaching. But again, a lot of things happened in order for that to happen. Remember, JT Daniels got hurt. A lot of uh, there's a lot of different things that happened in that process to give him his opportunity. Um, and so that's hilarious, man. Like, like in a sense, you say to yourself, man, he stuck it out. And we see kids in this transfer portal all the time. They're flying in and out. This, that, and the third, and. And it works out for some, right? Here's a prime example. Does Hendon Hooker go to the NFL from Virginia Tech? Or does he or does he go from Tennessee? Oh, Tennessee. Right. But what I'm saying is, so it's hard to tell a kid you should stay when you see it work for a Hendon Hooker. But then it's hard to say, hey man, you need to go when you see it work for a Stetson Bennett. But you see, here's the thing: it's about the system that you're in. And Stetson's credit, because there's a bunch of five-star dudes at Georgia that he beat out. That's that's something. When the dude that would, that came on uh, last night to take snaps, I think he was a five-star quarterback, um, that Stetson beat out. So I look at the Justin Fields thing. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields was not made for Georgia's current system at the time. It's different now. They have a different mm-hmm. offensive coordinator. He was made for a Ryan Day system. Um, and so that's why I think when you're a commit or you're a recruit and you're trying to choose a school, you have to take everything into account <laughs> because, you know, you you may be walking into something that does not fit you and you don't develop the way that you're supposed to. Hendon Hooker, he was made for Josh Heupel. I think Joe Milton was made for Josh Heupel. So I think it's a little different in that sense. Stetson, you know, we talk about his grittiness and stuff. Well, I was just talking about, yeah, but I I get what you mean so far, system, but I'm talking about when things are not going your way, you up and dip. That's what I was just simply saying. I know what you mean so far as schematically and philosophy-wise. Oh, for sure. I was just saying a lot of players, it's always a 50-50. If you stay, you could be Stetson Bennett. If you leave, you could be Hendon Hooker. You know, and for, for whatever the reason is, I'm saying, I, I totally get where you're coming from. But and you I'm can attest to this because you, there's probably kids in these kids here. Say, hey, man, you know, they ain't playing well. And, man, you just, you know, sitting here wasting your talents. You 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 can go somewhere else where they, you know, they appreciate you and everything. But sometimes you see some of these freshmen get thrown into the fire mm-hmm. and they get burned. Because <laughs> there, there's a reason somebody's sitting in front of you. Um because sometimes, you know, obviously, you know, you you should have great practice habits. But let's put it to you this way. Whose offensive line did a better job against Georgia? Ohio State's or TCU's? Okay, but if you are winning one-on-one battles against, you know, TC, and they have a good offensive veteran offensive line, but if you're winning one-on-one battles, Ohio State got two potential first-round tackles, you know, there's a there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's best to, like, okay, 
I, I'm getting better from this dude. I need to sit here and I need to learn and grow. And that way, when you come on the field, nobody's going to take you off the field. So hold on. Uh, P-Lo, what's up with you, baby? You said this man is halfway through his career. That's cold. Doing what he's been doing, being a 25-year-old college quarterback. That's crazy. Y'all tough. I'm but here's sorry. the thing. Nobody else at Georgia was doing that. The, he beat the young dudes out. Five stars. They have like three five stars on their roster. They they talk and listen. The kid, the Riola kid that decommitted from Ohio State, he may commit to Georgia. He was beat. They were bringing in dudes. JT Daniels is on this like his fourth score or something like that. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, listen, Kirby, and like you said, Kirby stuck. I Because I was 100% sure at multiple times last year. Like, yeah, when JT come out, uh, that's it for. So, yeah. It's over. It's over. So, he so you're 100 right. I just want to make sure I gave him his love. I'm gonna flip it now to Max Duggan. Shout out to him. Yeah, for what he did, you know, and there, he's another one who stuck it out. Got bitch. He wasn't, just to, he wasn't supposed to be the guy. He's another one who stuck it out. Um, like I said, I can't, I can't knock TCU. You no, know, did they play up the part? Not at all. But I understand when you fight them battles after battle after battle after battle, every battle you fight, you lose a play. Every battle that you you participate in, something happens somewhere down the line. And you literally saw, one, just a well-oiled machine in the University of Georgia. And you saw a new, I don't want to call it a machine, but a new something at TCU. The real test is what will they do again next year? Are they a one-shot wonder? Are they a flash in the pan team? I'm not saying they are. They're not. I don't know. But I'm just saying, you know, they came through. They fought the odds. They won the games they were supposed to win. And, again, now, we can always go back and question this. I don't believe a team that loses their conference should go to the playoffs. That's just my personal belief, right? Like, it's – yeah, I mean, it's – so – Okay. Hold on, because didn't they lose to K State, right? Yeah. For the conference champions. Yeah. So who would have been? So that poses the question: Who? So do, you would have to slide Utah in there, and you would have to slide Clemson in there. Well, I've already said this, and again, I'm not going. I don't want to really look. Me personally, don't want to look back at what was what. But I'm just saying, going forward, I believe the first round of the playoffs. I think they need to get rid of divisions. And it's just AC, the big power five, ACC, Big Ten, 12, so forth and so on. The top two of, the, of, the, of that conference plays for their conference championship, and that is the first round of the playoffs. Well, that's close to happening. It may not be that, but um, but that's almost, right. like almost like a play-in game. Yeah, you can call it whatever you want to call it. It's the first round because everybody's playing it. Instead of you're going to play a conference game and then you eliminate a week in the playoffs there, right? Mm -hmm. That is week one. You eliminate conference championships and then playoff week one, two, three, four, whatever. I just think that you should play the playoff. Your first, the first round of the playoffs is the conference championship game. Here's going to be, here's my problem. problem. You're talking about a 12 team. If you got five, that's already 10. And you could take the best record of the group of five since they don't have a championship series. You know, they could be the Cinderella team in some kind of way. But you can be in a position. So, And I don't know what they're going to do now. But the team that would beat any NFL team in the month of October and November, or part of November, is Purdue. That's how stupid hot they get. And so what if, what if Purdue beats Ohio State, Michigan, and let's just say they beat USC. And all of them are sitting there at 11-1. Who who's point eleven and one, and they've all all similar loss strength of schedule is about the same. How do you determine who plays for the championship? You can do that in there. I don't care. That's up to y'all within that in the conference. Maybe the conference commissioner gets in. I don't care. I'm talking about maybe whoever has the highest record overall. If they want to rank all the teams to have a top twenty five, I get it as part of marketing. You know, whoever has the highest rank or whatever. I'm just saying that 
if you lose your conference game, how does the winner of the conference game not go to the playoff? Like that doesn't make yeah. like like you know, because now you're talking about one side of the conference is weaker than the other side of the conference, but then yet I won the conference, but I'm not in the play. It, it, to me, yeah. it doesn't make sense. It, it's almost like when they vote for players, right? How can you be all state, but you're not all city? Is that kind all of district? Business? You're all district. Right. You're all state. You're the best player in the state of Florida, but you didn't make all city, all district. I think you should. It's a tier. All of the all city player, all district players, are in the nomination for all district players. All district players are in the nomination for all state players. But because it's a popularity contest, we want everybody to get a trophy. That's how you end up with. Be honest with you, with a, a team like a TCU in this deal, you know, in that sense. But that's just that's how I'm looking at it moving forward as they make changes into there. Um, go ahead, say your piece. I'm interested in this. I think it's clear because you have to, when you're talking about TCU, you have to go back to 2014 when it was between Ohio State, TCU, and Baylor. And Ohio State got the nod because TCU and Baylor did not have a conference championship. And Ohio State beat the brakes off of um, Wisconsin by what? 50, 60 points or whatever. What was it? 56, 58? No, 59 and nothing. And so people were always like, yeah, like TCU, because of the you know history of the Big 12 in the playoffs, Oklahoma had a good – I mean, Oklahoma almost got Georgia, you know, when Baker Mayfield was there. But they, they were so uncomfortable with putting, you know, that TCU in the playoffs. Because TCU beat Michigan, there was a feeling, okay, we got it right. TCU was silencing a lot of doubters. Then you lose 66, 65 to 7. My curiosity is what does that do for the next year? Because TCU, I personally think that TCU will win the Big 12 next year. That's just that's just my personal opinion. Um, I know, you know, there's gonna be heck. Who, who the heck knows? You know, I would love for UCF to win. That's just the personal uh, homer in me. But I think TCU will win. I think they have great talent coming back. Don't know who, who the quarterback's going to be, but they have some dudes from the transfer portal. How do you think, or if you were on the committee, do you look at them differently after the loss to Georgia? Because I honestly think if if it is if it is a two to three team ordeal. I don't think TCU gets in again after what happened. And that's just how I believe the committee will look at it. I have to be honest. We're talking about another year away, a whole another season away. Uh, if I'm holding, if I'm holding the team accountable for what they did in a national championship and they've had a body of work of 12 games prior to that, and I'm not taking that in consideration, it may be a whole different team. But I think you have to have a standard so people understand what it is. And to Rod Smith's point, he says, Coach, if that's the case, UGA, like he says, lost to Bama last year. Come on, make it make sense. That's last year. And you're 100% right. But the key word is last year. I'm talking about moving forward to the 12-team deal. As we get into this 12-team deal, I, I just don't see how conference champions don't go to the playoffs. It doesn't. Oh, you have to. I, it's My thing has always been it, it should be. Oh, this is going look at high school. Imagine District 8, 6A, conference champion, don't go to the playoffs, but the runner-up does. The guy that they beat goes to the playoff. Guess what? Everybody in their mama have an uproar. My, you okay. cheated my son. <laughs> Listen, now, you know in Florida, it's, it's all we already got a mess here in Florida, and some stuff like that has happened. I remember a 9-1 and Orange City University team did not go to the playoffs. Um so that that's that's just a little bit with Lorenzo. I've, seen, it, I've seen a three and seven team go to the playoffs. Though. Go to the playoffs and got just destroyed in the first round. And then and then you have like Central Northwestern round two when that should be either the state championship game or the game to get to the state championship game. But that's not the here. Well, there. But, but and I have to say this: and a lot of problems that happens with championship games is we're looking at the teams of what they are now, right? Yeah. 
And so you want a good game, and I understand that. But that's why I say if you if you look at these five power five conferences and everybody's in there, and like you said, eliminate some of these cupcake games. You can have no more, no more than maybe two, no more than two uh, group of five or less opponents, right? No more of the a bunch of, uh, let me see here. When I look at, um, I think you see Georgia play. schedules. Have you seen that <laughs> schedule for next year? No, but I'm gonna look at it this one now. So, for example, Georgia this year kicks off with Oregon, then they play Samford, South Literally. Carolina, then they play Kent State, then Missouri, Auburn, Vanderbilt, Florida, Tennessee, Georgia State, LSU. Okay, so they had their two in there. Okay, and that would that would have been fine. They had two of those guys in there. And then when you look at some teams; they have two or three of them, or maybe even one. Maybe if you want to do one, because you're going to have so many more teams in the conference. You know, you got that one kickoff classic, or you put it on the end, kind of like Bama likes to do. Bama likes to put that game kind of towards the end to rest guys up for the playoffs. I understand. I totally get that whole thing. But hold on, have you seen their schedule this year? Let me read it off to you. Georgia, they didn't, play, they didn't even play Alabama this year. No, but you want to hear their schedule for this coming year, for next season? Oh. Go for Here it. Here we go. They open up with UT Martin. Then they have a tough game against Ball State. Then they play South Carolina. Then they play Sanford. I'm sorry, they play UAB. All these games are at home. Then Auburn at Auburn, back at home against Kentucky, at Vandy, Florida at home against Missouri, at home against Ole Miss, at Tennessee, at Georgia Tech. Tell me who is beating them next year. Nobody. Okay. And again, I don't knock the in I don't knock the in 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 conference games. You're like Vanderbilt is not good. It's not good. But I'm just it's saying, you talk about UT Martin. Go ahead. But I'm talking yeah, about yeah. SEC, I'm saying. SEC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because you're saying, if you get rid of the divisions and you just say SEC games, you understand? Ball State. Bro, like, come on. UT Martin, Ball State, South Carolina is that. And then UAB, that's three games right there. That's three games right there that are not even out of cover, not even power five. You only playing twelve. I mean, gee whiz, you know. Now I, I can't knock it that Vandy may not be that good or whatever, but those are the three games right there. If you take two of those and bring in two more SEC games or, or somebody comparable, at least it, it it looks a little different. But that's just yeah. that's just how I look at it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So I wish I had real quick one ninety nine. I'm sorry, they called me Kenny one ninety nine. College football need real schedule to make this. Well, they just need somebody to make a decision, right? Yeah. And and stop trying to outthink the schedule. Play what it is. Do what you have to do. And matter of fact, they can even make it random. You know, if you know you got to play X amount of conference games, put it in the machine and let the machine spit out these games. Y'all can figure out whatever. You can put it on your schedule however y'all want to work it. But you need to call these these amount of games, whatever, you know? And stop uh, scheduling stuff for 2035 and 2000. And- 42. You know, if you want to go two years out, I'm cool with that. You know, if you want to be a two-year out schedule, I understand that because you kind of work your way. But when you start about three, four years out, yeah, that's too far. I think two years out is good enough because, you know, it's a lot of logistics. You want to be here, that or whatever the case may be. I'm okay with that. But when you start scheduling all of these these teams and all of this stuff, it's like, come on, man. But let's go to the let, – let's talk about this piece. Um, But I want to see this right quick. I want to talk a little schematics here uh, when it co- talked about the game. Talk about TCU running this this odd front of the 30 front. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to look at Alabama's schedule. and I, I was like, 99? That's basketball. <laughs> I'm like, dog, they put they good, but they put a 99 on somebody? All right, here we go. <laughs> so right now, if I look at Alabama, they come in Middle Tennessee, Texas Longhorns, fine. 
USF. All right. They play everybody else, and then they always do on the back end that third game, Chattanooga. The Chattanooga mocks. Hmm. So they division one double A. So those State. are the things I'm saying. Those kind of games. And I understand, you know, you got to have games like, you know, but but, but it is what it is. But anyway, let, let's talk schematically a little bit about this because I'm thinking about doing a good, bad, and ugly for this championship game. It's um, going to all be ugly. So I don't know what you're talking about good. It's going to be a lot of good for Georgia. For, okay, for Georgia. For, yeah, I'm going to okay, do it for Georgia. Good, bad, and ugly for Georgia, right? Okay. Fair um, enough, fair enough. But to, to from a schematic standpoint, what I kept seeing was they kept giving up the perimeter. Right. They kept giving up the perimeter. And when you run an off front like that, and they were bunching these guys in, uh, you know, having two, uh, three techniques and so forth, and the second level wasn't getting there fast enough. That goes to show you the athleticism from the offensive tackles and the offensive linemen for Georgia. Those not fat boys, bro. They big boys, but they're not fat boys, if you understand what I'm saying. Right, those guys right there getting to the next level and they're making you pay. If you hesitate one iota, it's a problem. And to Stetson Bennett, he's finding the open guy, he's throwing the ball, he throws a pretty good middle of the field ball. He really does. And that may not be the tallest guy. What is he like, six one or some six two? He's not a big dude. What, what, what is he, six two somewhere in there? Six, six, yeah, about six two. Six right. one, six two, yeah. So he's not a big guy, but he throws a great mid middle field ball. What do I mean by mid 15 to 25 yard, the digs and so forth, and whatever the case may be. But that, that guy right there, man, he did it. I mean, I, he did his thing. I'm happy for bro. They got him at 5'11. Really? I knew he wasn't tall. I was guessing 6'1. Six, six foot six one. He, on he got TV. Him at See, because Georgia's offensive tackles are like six seven, six six. Well, Walter McClendon is actually six four. Um, but now that I think about it, I thought because I don't know, he looked a little bigger, but maybe because they zoomed in. So I would guess. You know, maybe- well, no, I, I, I knew he wasn't tall, but I was just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt without looking. <laughs> but I knew I knew he wasn't a big guy, but five eleven. Uh, with the combine, he, like he might be five ten. You know, because that's what's listed. So he, you know, he might literally be five, ten and a half, five, ten and three quarters, something like that. The, but he throws a pretty combine. good middle of the field ball. He does. The NFL combine, I cannot wait. Because a lot of these dudes, they say, oh, he's six one. He he he's six feet tall, and they come out at five six. I'm looking forward to that. But uh yeah, to your point, he he does and he has great pocket awareness. He does a good job moving in the pocket. He's athletic enough. You know, I could probably see as him coming out, not wowing anybody, you know, coming out. He's not going to wow you as a quarterback. Somebody put in a comment earlier, he's a 2022 version of Ken Dorsey. Uh, I think he's a little bit more athletic than Ken Dorsey. Uh, I think Ken Dorsey was more of a game manager. I think Stetson Bennett's arm was stronger than Ken Dorsey, to be very honest with you. Uh, when it comes to the intermediate balls, his deep balls do kind of get underthrown a little bit. Receivers got to kind of wait on them. Um, but yeah, I take my hat off. He's going to have his opportunity, man, to break into the NFL, what he does with it. Now that's all on him. But, hey, that's what it is, man. What's your thoughts here? Let's go back to Georgia for a second. You brought up the thing about who's going to beat them. And they're only getting better. We just saw Caleb Downs, the number one safety in the country, playing in the in – the, uh, He's at Alabama. Oh, I'm sorry, Alabama. I apologize. You're right. Troy Bowles. I don't know why I'm looking at him. And Troy Bowles is what I'm thinking, but Caleb Downs popped in my mind. But Troy Bowles is the outside linebacker, the son of of uh, uh, Coach Todd Bowles at the Tampa Bay, Todd Bowles at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When you talk about stacking talent, this is- have they? Have they? I'm just posing a question. Chat, let me know as well. Have they overtaken Alabama in the reins of a team? Because there was a question about the word dynasty. So when they talked about Alabama had this dynasty. But we know Georgia's only had these, not only, but, you know, they've been very good. But so far as winning the Natty last year, this year, can they create a a dynasty? 
Somebody, Mackenzie Milton tweeted something, and it's it's. I'm trying, and I'm I'm bringing this up because it'll help me <laughs> buy some time to find a good answer for this question. But have you thought about this? Georgia last year and Georgia this year is one Ohio State receiver, injured receiver away from us not even having this conversation. I just had to say stop it, don't. No. I just, because no, I'm hurt. It. I'm hurt. Jamison Williams and then Marvin Harrison Jr. I just had to do it. Uh, shout out to QB1. Well, guess Moulton. what? If that's the case, guess what? If that's the case, Georgia was one defensive lineman away from having more sacks. Listen, they had a bunch of them on the field. They still couldn't get Stroud. So, I mean, it is okay. But they, they didn't have it. They didn't have it. That's man. fair. They didn't have no one, no one Smith. That's fine. But the facts still so stand. So, that's what I'm saying. I I, so, the fact still stands. Uh, the it's all still stands but, what? but the facts still stand. No, but I have to say this. And I'm mad at you guys. I said this earlier. I said, Ohio State, if they don't get to the national championship, that's a problem because the wide receiving room is ridiculous. And, but to your point, Marvin Harrison, who comes out and, and breaks out as this star, but I'm still mad with all of that talent that they have in that wide receiver room. Yeah. That, that yeah, they may not be Marvin Harrison, but it shouldn't be that big of a drop off in talent or at least in like, wait a minute, we still got to cover. Like you said, yes, Jackson Smith and Jigba goes down. I get it. That you got, that was got, got Julian Fleming necessarily didn't really pan out. But guys, y'all got bro a plethora of so, wide receiver talent. Here's what I will say: this proves that these WREs and stuff that you do on these kids, you break down what they're good at now. It still takes some time to get that in college. And that's what – so this freshman crop, I can tell you, I think a couple of them are going to be good. They got to get stronger. And it just – it took them – there was nobody that jumped out. So the one that they were hoping to jump out was Jalen Ballard. You did yes. his. He was from oh, Maslin. Yeah. Maslin, yes. He could never get it. He, he could – it was just too many, too many mistakes. So they're still developing. Now I have to say this. Now these new crop of receivers with Brandon Enos – and Carnell Tate and these kids, yeah, I think that they are a little bit more advanced than the current freshman class. But it don't matter if, if you have a five-star to your name, develop, you still have to develop, and they could not develop. But I can't make excuses because there's, like I said, there, there's there's tight ends and you know other things. Jackson losing him because they weren't expecting Marv to take that role. Um, but having um, you know Jackson out and Mecca, just nobody could really, you know, step up. Now, don't think that's going to be a problem next year. Um, but it, it's the only thing, and I need to get back to this question. If there's a, you know, I wanted to see is Ohio State at this level of Georgia, and it's clear that yes, they are. It was it was within one point of we could play coulda shoulda woulda. Lord knows I am, but. You're one point away from the defending champions. Okay, you're at that level. Now you have to take it to the next level. But with Georgia, it's so hard for me to say they've overtaken Alabama. But I think if they can win it, if they can win one more within the next two years, then I will comfortably say that. And the reason I say that is because we're talking two years. It's just it's just been two years. You know what I'm saying? A dynasty. I, I just don't think it's fair to just say in two yeah, years. Dynasty, yeah, in, but I get what they're saying. So let's just give. Let's have. But this is kind of the world we live in. It's just okay. Uh, he won a championship. The reign is over. You know, you got David Paul, a Georgia fan, insulting Nick Saban to his face, saying, "Listen, old man, you need to come up here with us because it's over for you." Um. So, so here's I. My question. So. Here's I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish your point. So to answer your question, I can't call them just yet. I think it will be – you got to give them at least five to six years. I think that's the fair route to, to go. And that's I, – I don't have any – I don't care about Ben. I, don't care, I just think if you're going to build a successful dynasty, look at the Golden State Warriors. You look at, you know, certain teams. It was not just one or two years. It was about six to ten years, you know, of, you know, sustained excellence. 
So that's where I'm at with Georgia. So so here's my question. I'm going to go back. I'll stick with Georgia right now. So is it fair to say Georgia is in the same boat right now as a Clemson? Good years, couple championships in there, but they haven't necessarily overtaken Clemson right now because Clemson has what, two? Yeah, I think and that's fair. And, and it's not it's not a knock to Georgia. We just you haven't done it yet in the sense of longevity where Nick Saban has done it over a period of what 13, 14 years. Georgia mm-hmm. has really been good since the Kirby Smart, maybe year two of the Kirby Smart era. When did Kirby Smart come in? About six, seven years, about six, seven years ago. Yeah, and remember he struggled, you know, his first few right. years. Right. Struggled. So now yeah. he's got it rolling. He's got it rolling. So now he can turn it over and I think it's the same thing with a dabble. I think dabble and those guys hit their peak and they may be not necessarily falling off be a good team but we're talking about you know with, with the exit of Trevor Lawrence that was the catalyst to that program you know and they oh, just yeah. haven't found that guy yet uh and so forth but I want to go back to Ohio State because you kept bringing them up and this is where you tell this is what you tell people I started doing WREs and breaking down these films for the class, I think it was the class of 21 mm-hmm. or 2020, 2020, I think I started because it was mm-hmm. April of 2020. So, yeah, it was 2020. In that class, you guys had Julian Fleming, I'm talking about just wide receivers, Julian Fleming, who necessarily didn't pan out overall. Would you think so? Just- yeah, injuries have Julian Fleming was a project because he wasn't a pure receiver because you always say polo timmies or whatever the case might be um so this is what i was this is what i heard his ranking was based on his potential it's not saying he sucked or anything but they thought he would grow into that number one receiver and so unfortunately injuries have kind of messed him up so to speak so this dude is the number one receiver in the in that class and the number right. one player in his state which was the state of uh uh pennsylvania pennsylvania right is- Saying a lot, Pennsylvania got some good ball. Okay, next you have Jackson Smith and Jigba. We know he had some injury here, so he comes in the fifth best player and the fifth in the best in the state of Texas. Yeah, CJ Stroud, of course, and then G Scott, who doesn't necessarily pan out coming from the state of Washington, the tenth best receiver in that class. Okay, that's the only receiver I think you guys had in that class. I'm um, trying to see who else is in this class that was a receiver. Nobody. Mayan Williams was the running back, and that was it uh, so far as that. Now, look at the, the reason I'm bringing this up because I'm trying to use this as a tool to show people just because you bring guys in, there is some ebbs and flows in this, right? There's some things that kind of come, and you say, okay, look, these guys are not going to necessarily pan out. You understand? Because now I'm in the class of 21. All right, Emeka Abuka. He's overshadowed Julian Fleming and uh, what's the other kid name? Not not Smith and Jigba, but who? Uh, who are you talking about? G. G. Scott. That's what I'm trying to say. Who's now a tight end? Right? Yeah. Who's now a tight end? Right. Travion Henderson, of course. And then Jordan. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's not Jordan. Uh, Marvin Harrison, who is now overshine that previous class. Jaden Ballard. He is now falling in the realms of the G. Scott, Julian Fleming. He's kind of falling to the wayside, right, as time goes on. This is what I'm saying. These guys come out, and, bro, Jaden Ballard comes in as the 15th best player at that position, the fourth best player in the state of Ohio. That's huge. That's big-time stuff. But how does it work out when they get to college? How do you turn it? And, again, you know, uh, your boy Brian Hartline got that sign developed here. So now how is it he can develop a Marvin Harrison but can't develop this guy? And, and that's just that's rhetorical. What I'm just trying to say is it, I'm not blaming Brian Hartline. What I'm saying is these things happen. Mm-hmm. These things happen. Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't saying that Brian Hartline can't do it. I was saying that some players can't grasp this stuff. Some players, you know, and Brian and, and look at Marvin Harrison comes in the same class and is killing it. And it's and killing it. sometimes it just takes dudes. A little longer. Um, we just talked about a Stetson Bennett, you know, guys like him. It took him a few years. Um, and I I know, you know, Julian Fleming has definitely shown flashes this year. And this is his really his first full year of football. Um, so he has a lot to, you know, grow from because this is 
his first year injury free, not, well, not quite injury free, but some of the stuff like you, it, it takes time. Like I think because we're just this instant gratification. And I think people forget that I don't care how many sleeves the opponent has on in a high school game, you know, it's a different ball game when you're playing in college. Like college is different. Your body has to adapt to your weight program and you have to be able to adapt to the life of a college athlete. Um, Like you said, can you, how fast can you take process information, grow from it, and then you can do it, but how does it translate to the field? Um, they're still talent there. They're still talent to work with, and I know they're very hopeful and they're expecting um, that you know this is the next step. But I don't. I don't know. Um, Ennis and Tate are going to be his real development. I mean, fair enough. I think Ennis. See, because Ennis, they can put anywhere. Uh, and the thing about him is he just has the attitude of I'm better than you, uh, which is why I love him. I think he he's – how he's not the number one receiver in the class, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, no, to your point, like I said, that's why, you know, when people are like, yeah, you know, he got to come in and start right away. He's got to start, you know, right away. It's just like, no, there's so many things, you know, and, and as this comment says, and I don't know if this is the case, you know, of what's going on at Ohio State, but – it's just Marv. You want to know why Marvin Harrison is so good? You want to know what he was doing? In a, he had them bring the jugs machine to the hotel in Atlanta, and he was in the conference room catching passes. You can't – every Ohio State interview they do, the reporters have to preference it when they try to – you know, they wrap up live shows and stuff. They say the noise that you hear is Marvin Harrison Jr., in the background on the jugs machine. And he started to get some of the other receivers like a Mecca Abuka. He came on the jugs machine when Jackson Smith, the Jigba was trying to get healthy. Jackson Smith and Jigba was on the jugs machine. Some of the guys, you know, the, the rookie, the freshman Dallin Hayden, um, you know, he was doing extra work. So it's, it's just, there's just so many things that go into development, um, how you adapt, how much work, you know, you put in, can you handle the work? And then the setup, the situation. Maybe it's not the scheme for you. Um, but you know, you never know. So uh, you so I totally agree with you, but I just want to read this off as a formal because a lot of people the reason I read these comments, I know people can read, but there are a lot of people who have their phone in their pocket and they just listen to the podcast. So that's why I want I like to read the comments. Somebody asked me that, Cole, why you read the comments? We can read some people, <laughs> you know, so just relax. Uh, like like what your boy say, relax. relax. As a former player, I can tell you right now, the biggest reason guys don't translate is because they don't put in the work. You guys see the workouts and stuff, but all conference guys do their own workouts, and that's just exactly to your point with Marvin Harrison. You know, you got to put in the extra. You got to do the extra. You know, it, it, it's no different than, than classwork, right? Yeah. You can't just do classwork and think you're going to be, uh, you know, an academic All-American. You got to go and put the work in off the field, outside of the classroom. Same concept, bro. It's the same. Like, there's nothing else different, right? It, it, it's just like this. And I really appreciate This is not being arrogant, but I'm being – I, I want to try to draw a parallel here. It's just like this show. I don't just come on here and just talk. No, me and Dom get on Sundays. We plan out what we're going to talk about. What's the topic? What is it looking like? Boom, if something big happens, we jump on. You plan things out. You got to put in the work. work you, just pre- yeah. just talk, you just want to talk to talk, that's fine. But here's the thing, man. You I can tell put you. In the work off the field. Yes. I have my own podcast with lactic acid. My preparation is, and I tell all the athletes this, I have to listen to every single interview they've done in the past and read all the articles. That way, I'm not asking them the same questions. And if you want to stand out, you have to be creative. So, you know, even in this, because if you and I just came over here and talked, um, then it would be terrible. Nobody would want to listen to this because it wouldn't make sense. So there has to be organization. There has to be structure. There has to be balance and everything that goes into everything you do, regardless of what you do. Yeah, definitely. Daniel, I guess you and if I said it correct, Coach, what do you mean about developing players? I guess when I was talking about Brian Hartline, 
I was just simply saying that when fans look at players, incoming classes, they think every player is going to pan out. And yeah. that is furthest from the truth. We hope they all pan out. But why do you think guys, when they need one receiver to fill a spot, they go get three? Because you're playing the odds, right? Why do you think there's more than two quarterbacks on a team? Why do you think it's more than this? Due to injury, but also it just doesn't work out. Think about it. If only 22 people play on a football team, why do they allow you to have 105? 85 scholarships, 105 total. Yes, injuries are part of it. But you've got to have depth in order to have great. Like these are the things I'm saying. So people have to understand. So right now, to your point, everybody's looking at the class of 23. And everybody's saying, and I guarantee they say the same thing about them same gentlemen that's kind of tailored off. Mm-hmm. Brandon Ennis is going to be the best. Noah Rogers, Carnell Tate. Oh, my God. Look what we got coming in. Uh, let me look at who the other receiver is going to be. Uh, Bryson Rogers. Oh, my God. Those four guys are going to come in and kill it. Well, you had that same conversation when G. Scott was on the line. Jaden Ballard was on the line. These guys were on the line, but it doesn't always pan out. So, therefore, you're playing the odds. As a fan, you're supposed to say that. Nothing wrong with that. So, that's what I meant when I said developing. I was being kind of funny when I said, oh, so Brian Hartline only knows how to develop a Mecca Abuka, but he doesn't know how to develop Jaden Ballard? No, he's developing the same. But to, to Don's point, people move at different levels, different things, and you have to account for that through your recruiting because now look at Jaden Ballard, who's a year earlier than Marvin Harrison. And Marvin Harrison has surpassed him light years already. And a guy like G. Scott, who knew he would have moved the tight end. But guess what? Moving the tight end from receiver, that takes that don't take a few days. That could take a year or two. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I just wanted to kind of tell the, the fan base, appreciate that shit. He said, Coach Preach. I pre- I'm about to call myself preacher. Y'all like some of my preach, pastor. No, we- no, Bishop Hayes. That's what we got to call it. Bishop. It's a Bishop bullwinkle. Hayes. Hell no. To, to the, the no, 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 no. Rest right. in peace. Oh, he passed away? He been dead. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't keep up on Bishop Bullwinkle that much. From I'm down sorry. here in Tampa. <laughs> from Tampa. Is he really? He looked like yeah. he was from Tampa. He da- but anyway. Music video was recorded in Tampa. With the, bi- the dude with the white suit and the bicycle in the backyard? <laughs> Somewhere in Tampa, yeah. And at the podium, yeah. Standing at the podium. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, oh God. God, I did not know he passed away, man. I'm so sorry to hear that, man. But anyway, Miss Wilcox, I see you. I got some for you, Miss Wilcox. I've been working on this all day today for you, Miss Wilcox. I think you really enjoy it because you are my girl. I appreciate. It. And I don't mean to say that. I know, you know, but you might, you mind. She don't. Ain't nobody. Listen, you can go to anybody else's podcast, Ms. Wilcox, and listen. You can even comment. But you are all mine. That's all I'm going to tell you. You understand me? So, anyway, uh, with all that being said, man, I don't understand insane. You said coach is Deacon do, do wrong. Oh, I get it. Coach is Deacon oh. do wrong. I thought you were trying to tell me something. Yes, I am Deacon do wrong. Coach, we are making bad decisions. All the time, if you understand what I'm saying. But anyway, let's wrap this deal up, man. We say we all go do an hour, but we love each other so. We love the team. That's what we call the people who follow this, the team. We got some good stuff coming out for us. So if you want to be a part of the team, you can start off by hitting the subscribe button. That'll put you on the Pop Warner level. <laughs> hey, we, we move hey, up to the varsity. You got to start somewhere, baby. You got to start somewhere. So if you hit the subscribe button, that'll put you on the Pop Warner level of the team, if you understand what I'm saying. All right? Got to get to Baby the Shaq, there you go. Matter of fact, Baby Shaq, you ain't causing more problem. I got to... I had to get Baby Shaq one because I ain't seen you in a while. I don't know where you've been, dog. I need you back. Anyway, with all that being said, matter of fact, Baby Shaq, you can become part of the team. You are in charge of the equipment. That's your job. You're the equipment manager, Baby Shaq, because equipment manager always causing problems. T. Hines, oh, she brought this up perfect. Speaking of Bullwinkle, says, uh, Coach, how you promoting Southern Soul and didn't know that? I'm promoting it. I'm sorry. You're, you're 100% right. But she brought up a great point. 
Southern Soul here will be February 10th, Friday. If you're into that kind of stuff, uh, DJ Tucker and my man, all these guys going on, come uh, come check it out. All the stuff is in the description. I'm going to start putting it on there and everything else, but I appreciate that. She put me out there to my dang coat. Yeah, I had to, I had to get you on. Mm, kiss on. I had to get you on that. But anyway, wrap this deal up, man. Let's get up out of here. Check us out. Lactic acid. That's where you can find me. Um, Dog on it. I forgot every, where we are. Well, y'all, it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, but lactic acid podcast on Instagram, YouTube channel, lactic acid with Dom Smith. Please, please, please check us out. Please subscribe. Um, like I said, once you, it's free over here too. So hit that notification bell, hit that like button. That way you're updating on all the latest episodes um, and everything. So uh, yeah, definitely be sure to check out what we have going on over there. Hank Hill, I apologize. I did not know I missed it. Like I said, y'all got to remember, that was, sometimes the stuff get pushed. If I'm over here looking at this screen, I may miss it. So I do apologize. Uh, I'll try to ask the producers if they don't see me put something up in a timely manner to hit me up. But I do apologize. Don't want to do that. But a 499, he says, this is the most depressed I've ever been over a football game, Coach. Love coming from Fort Worth. Anyways, God bless. Thank you so much, Hank Hill. I appreciate that. I didn't, hey, didn't great know. season. Great yeah. season. It was a great season. It came and went fast, man. It came and went fast. It's crazy, dog. We are in January. Like, we're in January. That's why the tree's still up, because it's going to be Christmas again before you know it. I ain't taking it down. So, crazy, 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 crazy. We're in January. I'm going to leave it at that. What I say, we have, we probably, let me check right now, we might be under 100 right now. The subscribers left to make 29,000. So come on, guys. If you're out there, tell a friend, tell a friend, put a subscriber in your in your mama name, in your cousin name. Anywhere that you've paid a light bill, get them to put it in their name too, because you know that. That's what it is. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, right here for the Coach Me Coach podcast. And also jump on with other events happening. Y'all been seeing me on Prime and all that stuff. Uh, we use this as, as well. But well, we got some exciting stuff coming up this year. Kings Talk Live will definitely be coming up. But Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. You know what's happening on Thursday? Tell me. Coach Hayes is going to break down all of the recruits from the class of 23 for the Miami Hurricanes. I do it every year. So on Thursday evening, I will be doing that. It'll be a pretty extensive show because we got so many to go through. We put the film up. I give you my ranking on them what I like about them, all of that good stuff. So people have been asking for it, and on Thursday it will definitely come out. And ready for the $5, Dom, going to keep that tree up to OSU win the natty. That thing hey. might turn brown, boy. Hey, listen. That thing might turn brown. What you think? Well, it ain't <laughs> it real, so fake. it's fake. That's what so I'm trying it, to tell it, you. That's what I'm may have some, turn brown. May have some mold. May have some mold on it. But I will say this. I will say this. Miami got a nice class coming. Miami got a nice class coming in. So y'all definitely want to uh, be tuned, stay tuned, and check out that episode. Uh, but also, man, we've got to give gotta give a shout out. Uh, DeMar Hamlin, he back in Buffalo. He ain't making home quite yet. Uh, still running text. Uh, but, you know, the prayers of the righteous avail much. And, you know, prayer changes things. And it definitely worked for him. So, uh, you know, we'll be remiss if we mentioned that. Spray paint it. That's cold. That's cold. That's cold. That's cold. That's cold. That is cold. But that's all right. You stop right now. And I mean right now, Ms. Wilcox. I'm out of here. Peace, love, and hell, Grease. We out this joint, man. I'll let you. Peace. I'll hit that button on the way out of this thing.